people will hear that. They go, okay, they get it. They're on board. They're going to exercise. How much do I need to do? Because listen, yeah, I, can it be, is it, I've got to change my whole life and exercise seven days a week and run marathons now, Dr. Peter, or is there, some, what would you recommend? What would you so I always start this question by saying, how much can you do? But, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to respond as one of my viewers. My, I'm going to say, listen, I'm so busy. You don't understand, Dr. Peter. I'm, I've got kids. I've got this. I've got a job. I'm already, I already have no time. I'm not sleeping out here. So I don't have any time. I mean, I, I, it requires a thorough discussion around that. I sure. mean, is that really true? No, of course it's not. Yeah. So it's then sad. you have to get into the weeds. Like how much time are you watching TV? How much time are you on social media? How much time are you doing things that might not be um, as high a priority as doing this other thing? Um, so so once you kind of get through that, I do I do sort of put put it on them and say, I would much rather you tell me the number than I tell you the number. I can tell you what I think the number is, right? Like Please. if you're playing the optimizing game and if you're saying... I want to be the absolute best fittest version of me that is humanly possible when I'm in my 80s. How much do I need to be training for that? The answer is probably one and a half to two hours a day. One and a half to two hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, of course, it's not going to be the same every day and, and it looks different, but, but it's going to average out to 10 to 14 hours a week. But I, but rather than tell somebody that, because I think that's very off-putting, yeah, <clears throat> I would just say, just tell me what you got. If you tell me you've got five hours a week that you can do this, I'll give you a great set of things you can do in five hours. And my hope, by the way, is six months from now, you're going to feel so much better that you're going to say, you know what? I would like to up this to seven hours a week. What's the difference in all-cause mortality if I go from doing zero exercise to doing just a bit? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And for some people, that question is all they need to get started. Going from zero activity to just 90 minutes a week is about a 15% reduction in all-cause mortality. So I'm 15% less likely to, to die. So in any given year, from all causes, if you go from being completely sedentary to just doing 90 minutes a week. Which is only like, what, I know. 15 minutes a day, 12 minutes a day. Or yeah, or just, you know, three times 30 minutes a week. That's a huge, that's a huge shifting of very important odds. Yeah. And and truthfully, like, I probably spend more time convincing people not on the all-cause mortality data, but on the health span data. I thought so. Because people don't, we don't think about our death. Yeah, death is so abstract. It really, I don't think it, I don't think it even sets in until you're in your 50s like I, I think it's very it's very hard to capture the finitude of what it means to be a human when you're young I, I think it's true at all ages but but i really think it's so much better to just focus on the quality of life you want to live what do you want to physically be able to do throughout your life and it's easier in people who have been around aging people yeah you know, which again, a lot of people in their 30s, their parents aren't even necessarily old enough that they can fully appreciate it. They might have to think, well, do I still remember what my grandparents were like at the end of their life? And were, was I inspired by them? And if so, that's what I want to do. Great. And if I don't want what they had, which is the answer I think most people will have, then what do I need to do to be different?